I'm fairly certain that if I am lucky or unlucky enough to live to the age of 100, I'm still going to be reassuring people that Diet Coke probably won't kill them. I assume I'll be doing this while sipping a Diet Coke and Jack Daniels just to drive the point home. That's right. If I live to an old age, I'm going to be that crone on your local news saying that the secret to never aging is to drink whiskey and surf and befriend your local crow population so they'll do your bidding for you. But also, you know, don't get your hopes up because 99% of my relatives die at the age of 60. So, I mean, let's be honest, I'll probably die bombing down a hill on my roller skates, but let it be known that no matter what, I'm blaming my genetics. Anyway, I've now made several videos talking about how aspartame is probably fine for most people to consume in moderation, just like everything else we eat and drink. The most recent video was last December when I addressed the breathless headlines claiming that aspartame was linked to anxiety in mice. Scientists have already studied the link between aspartame and humans and found none. It was just six months after that that I started receiving messages from people asking me to look into the news that the World Health Organization had labeled aspartame as possibly carcinogenic. I have to apologize because while I do try to answer as many questions as possible, whether through social media or just doing a whole video on a topic, I just straight up ignored those. Because that World Health Organization announcement contained absolutely nothing that I hadn't already addressed in previous videos, and all of those things still hold true. Aspartame is one of the most exhaustively studied ingredients in our food supply, and it's been found to be generally safe again and again despite fear-mongering from the all-natural crowd. Like anything we consume, there's probably an upper limit where it may cause as-yet-unknown problems, but as far as scientists can tell, it's vastly safer than the ingredient it's meant to replace, which is sugar. Which brings me to the World Health Organization's classification system. The WHO classifies substances in four categories. Group 1 is carcinogenic to humans, like definitely. Group 2A is probably carcinogenic to humans. Group 2B is possibly carcinogenic to humans. And then there's group 3, not classifiable as to whether or not it's carcinogenic to humans. These are ways to sort substances, not by how dangerous they are, but by how much evidence we have that they cause cancer. So aspartame is in the lowest actual classification level. Maybe it's carcinogenic, maybe it's not, we don't know for sure. To put this into perspective, uh, here are some substances that the World Health Organization considers to have more evidence for their danger for you. Alcohol, birth control pills, being a firefighter, mineral oils, lunch meat, sunshine, and salted fish are all in group one as definite known cancer-causing substances. Then we have high temperature frying, being a hairdresser, working the night shift, steak, and very hot beverages in group 2A, probably carcinogenic. And then alongside aspartame, we have aloe vera being a dry cleaner, magnetic fields, the electric charge, not the band, and pickles. Okay, so if this announcement from the World Health Organization made you throw out all of your diet soft drinks, you also might want to consider chucking all of your soothing lotions and then I don't know, move into a superconductor? I, I almost fell down another rabbit hole trying to figure out the easiest way to avoid magnetic fields, but I managed to stop myself so that I could get on with this video. Because I haven't even actually gotten to the point of this video yet, I'm not actually making it so that I can contextualize the World Health Organization's classification of aspartame that happened back in July. I'm making this video to complain that apparently there are a bunch of other people on YouTube and TikTok and Instagram and elsewhere who are getting paid big influencer bucks to contextualize the World Health Organization's classification of aspartame. And I am very jealous. Last week, I read this piece in the Washington Post that revealed that big junk food is now doing the same thing I have previously complained about other dystopian billion-dollar industries doing, paying social media influencers to market their products to a large audience with varying levels of sneakiness and evil. For instance, I previously blasted science influencers for taking money from big oil to pretend that propane is some sort of green technology. And then in May, I talked about how big meat is doing the same thing to convince scientists 
and science communicators to pretend that meat is somehow essential to human survival. You may recognize this tactic from the granddaddy of all big industries, Big Tobacco, which paid millions of dollars to get scientists to hide for decades the fact that they had indisputable evidence that cigarettes cause cancer. Now, I've criticized corporations like Coca-Cola a lot in my previous videos. They're pretty bad for humanity in general, considering that not only do they sell us unhealthy sugary drinks, but, you know, they also take our tap water and sell it back to us. And they sell tons and tons of single-use plastic that never gets recycled. So I wasn't exactly shocked to discover that the American Beverage Association, the trade and lobbying group for companies like Coca-Cola and PepsiCo and others... Uh, they're paying social media influencers to spread pro-junk food propaganda. But I was surprised at a few aspects that I found within this Washington Post expose. Like, it starts off by listening to influencers who all downplay the fear-mongering headlines about the World Health Organization's aspartame classification. In all, at least 35 posts from a dozen health professionals were part of the coordinated campaign by American Beverage. The trade group paid an undisclosed amount to 10 registered dietitians, as well as a physician and a fitness influencer, to use their social media accounts to help blunt the WHO's claims that aspartame, a mainstay of Diet Coke and other sodas, is ineffective for weight loss and possibly carcinogenic. That's a really weird way to open this article because in this case, those health professionals were saying something factually correct. And even though I am morally opposed to billionaires and multi-billion dollar companies uh, existing and also having a ridiculous amount of control over our cultural narratives, I sympathize with a company that wants to set the record straight when they're being unfairly maligned. For instance, if a trade group for EVs got fed up with headlines about how green propane is, I would understand them channeling some of their marketing budget towards influencers who could educate the population on why that's not true. And I think that starting with this specific example does a great disservice to this article. I almost just stopped reading because it seemed like more all natural chemical phobia, you know, but I'm glad I kept reading because uh, it got it got way worse and they, they actually do have some good points. So not only do many of these influencers apparently fail to disclose that they're being paid by these companies, which violates the Fed Federal Trade Commission's recommendations, but they're also being paid to tell their audiences to do things like eat candy and ice cream while also downplaying the health risks of highly processed foods and pushing unproven supplements. And these aren't just run-of-the-mill science communicators like yours truly, but registered dietitians and health professionals. You know, while anyone can claim to be a nutritionist, dietitians must complete extensive training and hold a license in order to have that title. It should mean something. The point of that education and that licensing is to give the public an easy way to find someone that they can trust for medical advice. But these people are clearly failing to uphold that trust. Like, I love sugar. I don't think it's required for most people to completely give up all sugar to have a healthy diet. But our society does not in any way need people to promote sugar. Here in the United States, we put sugar in everything. It's in our sliced bread for fuck's sakes. And unlike aspartame, there isn't a rampant amount of misinformation out there against sugar. Big Sugar isn't paying medical professionals to correct misinformation, but to spread it. Like, why else would the Canadian Sugar Association pay a dietitian to tell her audience that a child who is obsessed with sweets, they should let that child eat as much candy as they want? Like every week, take them to the store, let them buy as much candy as they want and eat it all. Do they want the dietitian to say that because it'll lead to children eating less sugar? Would the Canadian Sugar Association want that? No. It's because they know that this is not a way to foster a healthy relationship with food. It's a way to teach kids that it's okay to binge as much as they want on pure sugar. The Canadian Sugar Association benefits while the child is going to be left with the health problems that come from binging on sugar, plus the weight gain, which can lead to stigma, which can lead to eating disorders, which can lead to a lifelong unhealthy relationship with food. You know, it's going to lead to someone who 
regularly gives in to cravings for sugar by binging on sugar because that's what they were taught as a child. And I think no matter what you think about um, removing negative stereotypes about food, encouraging people to think in a healthy and positive way about their food, that is not healthy. The Washington Post report goes on to describe dietitians promoting collagen supplements, detox teas, capsules marketed for mitochondrial health, and even brain-boosting omega-3 fatty acid supplements to children as young as six months old. You may wonder who is overseeing the training and licensing of these dietitians. Uh, these dietitians who are using their titles to cash checks and promote unhealthy behaviors and shady supplements. Well, that would be the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics, who are sponsored by American Beverage, and Tate and Lyle, one of the world's largest producers of high fructose corn syrup and other sweeteners. The Academy has accepted millions of dollars in donations from leading producers of soda, candy, and ultra-processed foods, including Coca-Cola, PepsiCo, and Nestle. I honestly had no idea about any of that until I read this article. I used to tell friends who were looking for help with their diet to be sure to find a licensed and registered dietitian and not just a nutritionist. But I guess that's not enough. You you also have to check your dietitian's Instagram to make sure they aren't shilling for big junk food. I almost shortened that to big junk, but that's another industry entirely. All of this brings me back to why these dietitians shouldn't even be taking money from these industries, even when they have complete freedom to say what they want, and even when they're saying something factually correct, like aspartame is actually probably safe in moderation. It's exactly why I previously argued for science communicators to stop taking money from these big industries, because taking that money immediately damages your credibility, not just for that one sponsored post, but for every other post. The example I used before still holds. You know, if I took money from a whiskey brand that I already drink anyway, what's the big deal? Well, you could no longer trust me to hold big alcohol accountable. If I'm worried about getting that future paycheck, I'm going to skip doing a video on the research that shows alcohol is very bad for you. And I sure as hell wouldn't include alcohol on a list of the World Health Organization's known carcinogens. So while I do wish I lived in a world where large industries could just write me a check to say true things, I'm just going to continue to rely on my patrons. Uh, I'm pretty sure they're not even on the list of known or possible carcinogens, unless they're working the night shift. Hey everybody, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. If you loved the video, please subscribe. And if you think the world could use more videos like this and you happen to have a few bucks laying around, head to patreon.com slash Rebecca and join an awesome community of nerds like the people whose names you see on the screen right now. Thanks.